Ladies and gents, today I'm gonna to be building a custom tough gaming setup from start to finish. Now, since I'm building a tough gaming setup, it only makes sense to use tough components from Asus. I mean, after all, Tough Gaming offers superior durability, dependable stability, and great gaming value. And that is what this setup is all about. By the way, shout out to Asus for sending out most of the gear and sponsoring today's video. As always, let's start with the desk. I wanted to go with a sit and stand desk this time around to promote a more healthy lifestyle. I found this on Amazon for around 230 bucks, which is a pretty good deal on a 55 inch motorized desk. Plus it's got over 17,000 positive reviews. So let's check it out. Ooh, I like the finish. Looks like we have MDF wood and kind of a glossy surface. You can kind of see the reflection of the light on here. This is gonna work perfectly. No! No, it's scratched. Why is it always when I order desks, there's something wrong with it? What is my luck? Unfortunate, but luckily this is the bottom side. So it's not gonna be visible from the top. Let's check the surface. Okay, we're good. The surface is undamaged. All right, so first impressions of the desk, I was actually very impressed with the durability. On the website, it says it supports up to 110 pounds, but I don't know how accurate that is because it actually was able to support my weight, which is 175 pounds fairly easily. I did feel like the motor was struggling to lift me up, but it was able to lift me up and lower me down without a problem. I probably wouldn't put anything more than 150 pounds on here just to be on the safe side. Unfortunately, the surface does attract a lot of fingerprints as you can clearly see here. So it's always a good idea to keep some cleaning supplies on hand just to wipe it clean. There's one thing I don't really like about the desk and that is the position of the grommet. They only included one, but it's on the left side. Most of us keep our PC on the right. So it would have made more sense putting it over there so we can route the cables through the desk and into the rack underneath. Um, it's nice they included a rack. It's a bit flimsy, but you know, at least there's an option to hang your power strip on there and other loose cables. Another really cool thing about the desk is that it comes with two hooks. You can position these in four areas of the desk, either in the front or in the back on both sides. So I thought that was pretty cool. But yeah, other than that, for the price, it's a pretty decent desk for a motorized desk, that is. You do have the option of programming the height of the desk as well using the controller in the front. So you can select up to four different heights. Do be warned that the motor is extremely slow. So it's gonna take a while to rise and lower to your desired height. But yeah, I mean, again, overall the price, I can't complain. All right, up next, let's hook up the monitor, boys and girls. So we're gonna be going with the new Asus Tough VG28U. This is a 28 inch, 4K, 144 hertz monitor on a fast IPS display with a one millisecond response time. So it's got amazing specs for gaming, but it's also great for content creation. With social media pretty much taking over the world, I wanted this setup to be able to comfortably do both without a problem. That is one clean looking monitor, wow. Very thin bezels all around, very thin chin on the bottom as well, and a super functional stand you can raise and lower, and I believe rotate 100 or 90 degrees on both sides. So we're not gonna be removing the mount just because it offers a lot of adjustability. So we're gonna keep the stand, can it swivel actually? You can swivel too? I did not even know about that. Okay, we're definitely keeping the mount on this one. We got some cable management stuff in the back here. There's a clip where you can route the cables through. And then the ports are actually fairly high up, so it's not gonna be visible from the front. So overall, really nice design on the Asus Tough monitor. 
This monitor is also great for console gaming as well. In the back, there's two HDMI 2.1 ports, which supports native 4K at 120 Hertz. So if you guys own an Xbox Series X or a PlayStation 5, then you can take advantage of 120 Hertz refresh rate gaming on this. All right, before I bring in the peripherals, we gotta pick a mouse pad for the setup. These are all the Season 9 TechSource mouse pads already available on the website, dealsource.tech store. The main color scheme is black, primary black with RGB lighting. So we got to pick a pretty dark color scheme for the mouse pad. This one actually looks pretty cool, but too much red. We don't have yellow. We don't have red, nor do we have green. This one's actually one of my favorite designs, cyber black. Let's put this one aside. We might have to go with that one. And then we got cyber junk red. If we had a neutral color of this one, I think this would also work really well, but there's just too much red in here. And this one's a different color scheme. All right, cyber black it is. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> it's so beautiful. I love this design so much. So for the keyboard, they actually sent over the ROG Falchion NX. Um, this is a 65% wireless mechanical keyboard, but it's part of the ROG lineup. It is not part of the tough lineup. And I know for a fact, Asus actually has a few tough keyboards. So I'm curious why they sent me this one to use in the setup. Oh look, it even got an innovation award at CES 2021. Interesting. So this keyboard has the ROG NX red mechanical switches. Interesting, I gotta give it a test drive. This is super compact. Ooh, looks really nice. Mm, not bad. And then for the mouse, we're going with the Tough Gaming M4 Air. I can already tell just by holding the box, guys. This is an extremely light gaming mouse. It weighs 47 grams and it's IPX6 water repellent. So it's protective against accidental spills and sweaty palms. But I think the coolest feature on here is the antibacterial guard. I've never heard of that on a gaming mouse before. It says it basically keeps the mouse surface and buttons clean and sanitary. That is a very fascinating feature. Oh yeah, this is really light. Wow. Is there anything in here? It's so freaking light. I like the design. Yeah, fits my palm nicely. Monitor light bars seem to be extremely popular these days and they're very useful as well. So I found a really cheap option on Amazon. So I figured why not add it to our setup? It could come in handy. Oh, this one's USB-C powered, nice. So another thing I want to add to the setup is a dedicated charging station, a place where I can charge my keyboard or wirelessly charge my smartphone if I want to. But here's the thing, I don't want it to stick out. I want it to blend in nicely with the setup. So I looked up on Amazon, did a couple hours of research and I found this super sleek grommet charging station that also has a built-in wireless charger. So the way it works is you drill a hole in your desk and you basically pass this through from the top and then you screw it in from the bottom so it's nice and snug. Then you can slide the top over and you get access to two power outlets as well as two USBs to charge your USB devices. But here's the cool part. If you wanna charge your phone wirelessly, you close the lid and this becomes a Qi charger. All right, where's the best place to install this? Obviously I want it somewhere within reach, but I don't want it to get in the way of anything as well. So we got the speakers on both sides of the monitors. So I feel like we can put it right over here next to the speaker. So should we put it behind? No, it's gotta be a, it's gotta be somewhere within reach so I can lay my phone on there and charge it wirelessly. So I think over here is perfect. There's nothing underneath it as well. So I'm gonna be using this whole side picked up from Amazon. It's the exact same diameter as the grommet. So we're gonna have that perfect circle, nothing too small and nothing too big. We're going to cut into the desk the exact same size. You know what, I feel like I'm making a mistake. So let me just bring out the speakers real quick and put them where they belong before I start drilling holes into things. So I'm gonna be going with the Logitech Z207 speakers in black. These sound incredible for the price and they're gonna match the color scheme of the setup as well. Oh, these look so clean, you guys. I love the stealth black look on these.
Now this is where I usually would just take some sandpaper and smoothen out the edges, but honestly, it's such a smooth cut that I don't even need to. Besides, the grommet's gonna cover up maybe like a quarter inch from the top, so you're not gonna even see any of that. Oh, look at that. Look at that, that is beautiful. Let's just clean around there real quick. All right, we gotta test it out, right? We gotta see if it works. Let's go. Oh, that's so clean, dude. Wow, it's like almost the same color as the uh, desk as well. Oh, oh, I love it. Let's check the um, plugs real quick. Okay, let's say I wanna charge my keyboard. Plug this in and then pop this in the USB port. Yes, it is. It's charging. And now we just gotta screw it in from the bottom. Perfect. Doesn't move anymore. Look at that. All right, boys and girls, let's add some lighting to our setup, shall we? I feel like during the day, the setup looks really nice, but at night, it's gonna look really dark. There is no light source in our setup. The only light source we have is from the monitor light bar, and that's only white light. So I feel like we can add some RGB to spice it up a little bit. And at the end of the day, RGB is life, right? We're gonna be adding a Gobi RGB strip in the back of the desk, and we're gonna be hooking up some light bars in the back of the monitor, just to give the setup a nice glow. Okay, now I'm gonna add the finishing touches to the setup. We definitely need a pencil drawer because the setup has no storage, so this is a perfect way to gain access to our daily essentials. And then for a little bit of decor, I'm going to add the Divoom DIY pixel art. It's basically a really nice way to decorate your setup. You can sync it to your phone and basically add any image you want from the library or upload your very own pictures from your phone. Oh! Why do I keep doing that? Oh! All right, so for audio, we're gonna be tossing in a pair of headphones from Panasonic. This is one of the cheapest ones I can find on Amazon. That also has a nearly five-star review with thousands of positive ratings. So uh, this is the Panasonic HT-161. These are fairly light, very comfortable, great sounding headphones according to the reviews. Um, I did not pick up the one with the microphone because I'm gonna be hooking up a dedicated mic to the setup. This is one of the best, if not the best value microphone bundle kit you guys can buy under 50 bucks. In fact, I featured this exact same one in a previous Cool Tech video, I think over a year ago. If you guys missed it and you wanna check it out, you can click on the top right bubble. But this kit pretty much comes with everything. You get a nice solid boom arm, a shock mount, pop filter, windscreen, and the microphone itself. So I'm gonna hook up the boom arm over here on the right side, just so it's a bit closer to the PC. And one of the things I really like about this uh, microphone bundle kit is that it's USB powered. So you don't need an audio interface uh, to hook up. You just plug the USB in the back of your PC and you're pretty much good to go. And it sounds really good too. We'll do a quick sound comparison at the end once the setup is complete. All right, boys and girls, the setup is now missing one thing, and that is a PC to power it all. So obviously we are sticking with tough components for the setup, so I wanna stick to the same ecosystem with the PC as well. So most of the components here for our build are from the Asus Tough Gaming lineup. So starting with the processor, we are going with Intel's 13th Gen Core i5-13600K. This little bad boy is a 14 core, 20 thread processor. We got six performance cores and eight efficient cores in here, which is gonna help with content creation and just overall productivity. After all, this is gonna be mostly focusing on gaming, but also content creation on the side. So I'll be pairing the CPU with the ASUS Tough Gaming RTX 4080. With this combo, I'm able to game comfortably in 1440p in high settings, even bump up the resolution to 4K if I feel like it. After all, we do have a 4K monitor, so it just feels like a shame not to take advantage of certain titles 
and 4K resolution. It is a part of the tough lineup, so expect military grade capacitors rated at 20,000 hours to make the GPU more durable. That is in essence the whole theme of this entire setup and PC build, durability. Also with GPU Tweak 3, they've completely revamped their GPU Tweak software with a new interface, voltage frequency overhaul, and automatic profile swapping. The motherboard I'm going with is the Tough Gaming Z790 Plus Wi-Fi. It's got Wi-Fi built in, um, and it supports 13 gen processor. So it makes sense to go with a Z790 chipset to take advantage of the extra features. For memory, we are tossing in a 32 gigabyte kit from Crucial. This is running on a frequency of 5200 megahertz, which we will be able to take advantage of because of the Tough Gaming Z790 Plus Wi-Fi. This supports all 13 gen Intel processors right out of the box without having to do a BIOS flash but it also comes with some really neat features. My favorite one is the Q release features. There is a Q latch for the M.2 slot, and there's also a quick release button for the top PCI slot. So it's gonna be really easy to install and uninstall graphics cards. On top of that, it's also built tough. They've added sheets to the PCI slot and the memory modules to support and protect your components, and also to make sure everything is firmly installed. For the operating system, I'm going with Windows 11, just to take advantage of the optimizations. There are a lot of games that actually perform better in Windows 11 than they do in Windows 10. I was able to get the key for around 15 bucks at yourcdkey.com. Uh, if you guys are planning to build a PC or you need a key for Windows 10 or Windows 11, make sure to use the code TS20 for an extra 20% off. Cool in the CPU is the Tough Gaming LC240 ARGB. It's a 240 millimeter AIO with two 120 millimeter fans, but we will be adding additional Tough fans in the case for better airflow. Powering the entire system is the Tough Gaming 850 watt power supply. It is gold certified and this is all the juice that we're going to need to push both the 13600k and the rtx 4080 without a problem and finally everything is going inside the new tough gaming gt502 case this is such a unique case and one of the reasons why i went with it is because it's going to integrate quite well with the setup that i'm building and you'll kind of see what i'm talking about at the end of the video so this case has a dual chamber design basically the power supply and the storage devices are located in the back. And they did this to separate it from the CPU and the GPU for better cooling. Speaking of cooling, it actually supports up to 13 fans, which is absolutely nuts. So we're gonna be tossing in six additional TF120 fans in there for better airflow. One of the things I love about the case is the toolless side panels. You can pop both of them off by simply pressing a button in the back of the case. And finally, there are a couple of Velcro straps on the top, which support up to 30 kilograms, which is crazy. It's gonna be very easy to move around the PC once you're done building in it. But these straps are gonna come in very handy when I integrate this with the setup. And again, you guys will see what I'm talking about, but it's one of the reasons why I decided to go with this case. But yeah, these are all the parts I'll be using for the PC build, let's begin. Okay, wow, this was hands down one of my favorite setups I have built recently. It came out looking amazing, but more importantly, the setup has functionality and synergy. I played around on the setup for about a week now, and it's been crushing Modern Warfare 2 and 1440p, constantly pushing over 200 FPS 
in ultra settings. It didn't do too bad in 4K resolution either. I was still averaging around 120 FPS in ultra settings, but of course this is a competitive game, so it's better to play in 1440p and maximize the FPS to gain a better advantage over your opponents. To be honest, I enjoy playing Diablo 4 a lot more than Call of Duty on the setup. Diablo 4 isn't really a competitive game, so you don't need that much FPS. So I was able to take advantage of the 4K monitor, bump up the resolution to 4K and max out the settings. Oh boy, that is such a fun game to play. To be honest, at times I kept forgetting I was playing on a wireless keyboard. For instance, on Modern Warfare 2, the response is so great that it feels like I'm playing wired. That paired with the super light tough gaming M4 mouse made me clap these kids on multiplayer. But the mouse is only as good as the surface it's on. The TS mousepad certainly was the MVP here as it provides a very smooth surface for the mouse to glide on while keeping up with your reaction times in game. Speaking of gaming, I have to talk about the PC for a bit because this has been the most interesting mod I have done to this setup. And if I'm being honest with you guys, I kind of took a shot in the dark and tried something new not knowing what the result was gonna be. At the end of the day, that's how you grow as a person, right? You push yourself out of your comfort zone to try new things. And that's exactly what I did here. So clearly there was no space to put the PC on the desk and I didn't wanna put it on the floor because number one, it would attract dust and dirt so much easier. But more importantly, it's a sit and stand desk. So I need the PC to rise with the desk. The only solution, hang it underneath the desk. Oh man, look, I know, I know it probably sounds stupid and probably even looks stupid, but hey, it worked. I thought to myself, you know, this case has some pretty sturdy straps. I wonder if there's a way I can attach this underneath the desk so that it can move with the desk. So I went on Amazon and found these stainless steel pad eye hooks and basically attached them underneath the table. The screw was a bit longer than the thickness of the desk, so I just used a bunch of washers to fill up the extra space and ended up screwing them in just fine. Then I attached a carabiner clip to each hook and proceeded to pass through the Velcro straps. On the listing, it says that each hook can support up to 80 pounds and well, I installed four of them. So I was fairly optimistic that it was going to support the weight of the PC, which I think was around 50 pounds if I had to guess. So it was time to test it out. I can't begin to explain the amount of relief I had when the desk was pulling the PC up without any issues. I was extremely happy with the results. If anything, this is a true testament to how durable ASUS Tough Gaming products really are. The Velcro straps from the GT502 case were extremely grippy and didn't even come apart. One thing I will say about the location of the PC is that it's a bit close to my legs. And although it doesn't really bother me, nor have I accidentally kicked the case yet, but it's still something to be cautious about because I'm not really used to the PC being in that location. So I always forget that it's there. Now the desk I use for the setup has to be the MVP here because I did not expect to be disimpressed from a budget sit and stand desk. Impressive strength, useful included accessories, and a programmable control pad for a pretty good price. Unfortunately, it doesn't have any storage, so I added my own using a pencil drawer to keep all of my daily essentials in here, like this all-in-one screen cleaner. You simply pop it out, spray, and wipe it clean because it's also a microfiber cloth. It's such a useful thing to have around in my setup to clean fingerprints for my monitor and my smartphone. Another thing I keep in here is a single USB-C cable, which is what I use to charge my keyboard and my Devoom pixel art. I slide open the grommet and plug it in the USB port to juice it up. And if I need to charge my phone, I close it up and it becomes a Qi charger. It charges my iPhone 14 Pro Max like 1% every five minutes. So it's not the world's fastest wireless charger by any means, but if you're gonna keep your phone at your setup, might as well juice it up at the same time. But I just love how it stays hidden when not being used. It almost feels like a built-in feature that came with the desk. Now for audio, I mostly use the Z207 speakers for watching content or listening to music, but when it's time for gaming mode, I close the shades. Then I bring in the Panasonic headphones and the mic combo, and lastly, I turn on the RGB because it's about to get serious. The sound quality from the microphone is actually pretty nuts, you guys. Uh, this is unedited, by the way. Uh, the microphone is about six inches away from my mouth and I'm using the included windscreen and the recording level is set to 50%, which I think is the sweet spot. Anything higher than that and you will start to hear clipping. Um, let's do a quick typing test as well while I'm continuing to talk into the microphone. Obviously the microphone isn't that far away from the keyboard so you will hear the typing noises. The further away it is, 
from the keyboard, the less noises you will hear. So it really just comes down to preference. Now for lights, I didn't wanna to go too heavy on the RGB, but at the same time, I did wanna add some lighting to the setup. So I added a Govi RGB strip in the back of the desk, which apparently doesn't even work. It actually never worked. In hindsight, I probably should have tested it before I hooked it up to the setup, but you guys can learn from my mistake. Always, always, always test your stuff before you install it. Luckily, the Govi light bars worked. So at least there's some lighting being bounced off the wall. But I also added a monitor light bar because it's very important to keep your eyes healthy and using your monitor in the dark is really bad for your eyes in the long run. But what's so cool about this light bar is that it has two sources of light, one for the front and one for the back. So I can add some nice ambient lighting if I wanted to. I can control the temperature and the brightness of each light individually. So let's say if I wanna stick with some warm lighting for the front and cool lighting in the back, I can do that. I've also learned a very valuable lesson from my past setup builds. Never cheap out on the chair. So I spent a bit more and I picked up the GT player for about 120 bucks. And surprisingly, it's a pretty comfortable chair. I'm not gonna lie, at first I was kind of skeptical of the design. I assumed it was gonna be those super extremely stiff gaming chairs, but it actually wasn't. It comes with two pillows, one for your neck and one for the lumbar. But check this out, the lumbar pillow vibrates. I know, there's a cable that's attached to it. So you basically plug this into a USB port and the pillow starts to massage your lower back. It's great for the lower back or other body parts. No, but seriously, this chair is awesome. Really comfortable padding for your butt cheeks. It's got backrest tilt adjustment and it has a built-in footrest. What other chair has a built-in footrest that also massages your back? I'll wait. With all that said, it's not a perfect chair by any means. There are two things I didn't really like about it. Number one, the casters are cheaply made. It was very difficult to roll around my rug. So if you guys have carpet or rug, just know it's gonna be kind of difficult to move around with a chair. Number two, the seat gets warm pretty fast. I started to get moist down there just after one hour of gaming. And my room isn't even that hot. It's like maybe 78 degrees Fahrenheit at most. So I can only imagine how much the chair will be cooking your cheeks during the summer. But for the price, I still recommend it if you guys are looking for a super comfortable chair for around 100 bucks. I guess I can see why it's got a lot of positive reviews and apparently it's the number one bestseller. I mean, this chair dumps on anything remotely close in this price range. And finally, let's talk about cable management. Thankfully, the desk made it very easy for me with the included cable rack, but I had to use some of my own expertise to help with the routing like cable clips and Velcro straps. For once, you guys, I'm extremely happy with the overall outcome of the setup. There's not one thing I dislike about it. Usually when I'm building setups like this, there is one thing that I don't like. Oh, the Gobi strip. The Gobi strip doesn't work, so okay, fair enough. I don't think the Gobi strip actually affects the setup in any way. Other than that, I think the setup is perfect, at least to me. It's aesthetically pleasing, it's got functionality, it's got synergy, everything works so well together. But I wanna know what you guys think about it. Obviously, that's more important to me is your opinion and your feedback, so give me the rating in the comment section below and let me know what you would change or do differently with this setup. Also guys, if this is your dream setup and you would like to win something like it, then you're in luck because ASUS is hosting a giveaway campaign where they're giving away a bunch of sweet prizes from their tough gaming lineup, like a 13900K processor, an RTX 4070 Ti graphics card, and other cool prizes. I'll drop a link to the giveaway link below, along with all the products I used in this setup. Also, you guys can check out their deals page since they are offering a ton of discounts on most of their tough gaming products. Guys, make sure you're subscribed for more awesome PC gaming and setup content like this coming your way very soon. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you very soon in the next one.